everything that I could say about my wife, I think I wrote it in a book. He who finds a wife finds a good thing. Um, <laughs> apart from the salvation of my soul and the baptism in the Holy Spirit, and the best thing that God has done for me is to give me a good wife. Uh, well, the preacher had uh, reminded you of so many things, how we met, about the uh, New Testament Bible, the two white handkerchiefs that turned somebody who was an absolute rotting sinner to making a decision to say, this is the fellow I'm going to marry. The, the preacher told you, and by the way, that sermon was absolutely great. Um, I've listened to birthday sermons before. The one I had today is excellent, excellent, excellent. What can I say about my wife? Uh, I don't want to keep on repeating what you know already. You want to die? Mess with my wife. It's as simple as that. I will kill you so thoroughly. You won't even wake up on the resurrection morning. I've said it before, and people have said if you, if you kill somebody, the government will kill you. I said, they have to find the weapon first. I'm not going to kill you with a gun. You just sleep and not wake up. And the doctors will call it heart attack. And I would tell God not to wait till the, sorry, the day of judgment. Just send this fellow to her straight away. I mean, it's as simple as that. Every man has his red line. Uh, of recent, I heard that somebody was talking in saying that uh, Pastor Adeboye is uh, getting the power he uses from uh, some demons at redemption camp. And some people say, aren't you going to answer this one? I said, ah, we should be praying because this man is uh, committing the unpardonable sin. When somebody begins to give the glory of the Holy Spirit, to demons. That's what Jesus Christ said. That's what they said to Jesus about Jesus. They said uh, he's casting out demons using the power of demons. And Jesus Christ said, mm, well, that fellow is not only doomed in this world, but he's doomed in the world to come. So when you hear somebody say that kind of thing, you should just pray for mercy for such a fellow. So even Jesus Christ had this red line. He said, if you sin against God the Father, you'll be forgiven. Sin against God the Son, you'll be forgiven. But you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, so you are finished. As rich in mercy as God is, you cross that red line, you are done for. So there were all kinds of people who have been mocking us, talking all kinds of rubbish, but they have been so careful. They didn't mess around with my wife. Because if they do, <laughs> you will read about it in the news. I love you, you are my children, you are my friends, and as long as 
You don't touch my wife. I can't take that. You mess around with her. There's no begging. We won't even be around to do the begging. It's as simple as that. When you say, how, how can a man say that of a woman? I, well, maybe, maybe I never told you this one. I'm probably just wanting to say, um, apart from the fact that we suffered together, apart from the fact that of all the people who were courting her, I was the poorest. Uh, she's a princess, and uh, I'm a nobody, etc., etc. Apart from all those ones that, I mean, uh, you know, when the Lord was uh, dying on the cross, he looked down from the cross and saw one fellow and he said, Hey, boy look after my mother. Uh, apart from the fact that when I was coming to do my postgraduate studies, uh, I could hand over my mother to this woman and I knew she would take care. The fellow who can take care of your mother. The fellow you can trust your mom to. Particularly when you happen to be the only son of that mom. And then now somebody will now come and begin to tell you something about that woman. The best thing to do is just kill that fellow. Uh -huh. But uh, apart from that, uh, there was a time we, I decided to fast, you know, because I have faced challenges in my life. And there was a particular one that I, I knew this one is going to require fasting and prayer. So I decided I will fast. I fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And of course, you know, whatever I'm doing, she's doing. Um, she's very kind. She knows it's not going to be easy to fast 40 days and 40 nights if your wife is eating. Uh, and uh, I'm telling you, <laughs> I've, I'm yet to meet a better cook than my wife. Uh, so uh, in order not to get me tempted, when I'm fasting, she will be fasting. 40 days, 40 nights, I fasted and prayed and uh, the mountain remained. So I felt, well, if 40 days and 40 nights won't solve the problem, let's, let me try a second time. Another 40 days and 40 nights, and she joined me, and the mountain remained. So I said, all right, I think what I will do is this. Uh, my dear, I'm going to fast until this problem is solved. At least if God sees that I'm about to die, he will have to respond. So uh, let's reach an agreement. By the time we reach 40 days and 40 nights, if this problem is not yet solved, you will break and I will continue. And we agreed. Then 40 days and 40 nights came. <laughs> and the mountain was... Uh, a little bigger than before we started. <laughs> so if you think you have seen mountains before, I have seen maybe one or two. So I decided I will continue. So my dear, thank you very much. You've done your bit. I mean, 40 days, 40 nights, three times in one year. Uh, I mean, you have to be a very special wife. So thank you very much. She said, no. When you stop is when I stop. Ah. Uh, that's not what we agreed upon. No. And when I'm talking of fasting, I'm, <laughs> I'm talking of fasting. You know, that kind of fasting that uh, all the holes in your belt, you have to punch new ones. 
uh, because you have uh, contracted a little bit. 41st day, 42nd day, and she refused to stop. She said, no, you keep going. We are in this together. That's why I said to God, well, solve the problem if you want to. I'm not going to lose my wife. I was compelled to break after 42 days because my wife says, I'm not stopping unless you stop. And that's the kind of woman my wife is. <laughs> so when, you, when a man says, I want to spend the rest of my life with a woman, and the woman is someone who says, well, if you have to die, we die together. And then if you want to live, you live together. So if anybody sees the glory of God in our lives today and is uh, upset, may God forgive. If you see the glory and you don't know the story, may God forgive you. Um, maybe that's about all I should say about my wife. Uh, all the other things you have said, um, at least those you know. Some of you don't know 10% of our generous nature. Many of you have no idea what, she, what length she will go to, particularly when someone is down, to see that that fellow is lifted up. probably because of my own nature of assignment. Someone may have a problem. They will inform us as a couple, and of course he is my prayer partner, and we will pray. And because there are several other things for me to think about, there may be a tendency for me to feel that I've prayed about that problem, I fasted about it. I have done something. And she won't let me forget. She will suddenly say, we have an unfinished job. There is pastor so-and-so. There is sister so-and-so. There is brother so-and-so. The miracle we are expecting for that person is not yet here. And I will get back to square one. I thank God for that lady. One thing is certain. If there's anyone going to heaven, my wife is going. I know that. I had to beg her, even this morning as we were sitting down here, you are the one people have come to celebrate God about. St relax now, at least for two hours. Enjoy the program. As we were sitting down there, well, have, they, have they given something for that fellow? What about that lady at uh, three by three? Uh, have they sent? <laughs> ah. Relax. Somebody is doing that. That's why I'm able to stay in the prayer room throughout the convention, praying, because I know whatever is going on out there, there's somebody who is looking after. Idea had always asked me, What is your 